So next we will see about megaloblastic anemia. So megaloblastic anemia is another nutritional deficiency anemia only. Here the deficiency is going to be for fol folic acid and vitamin B12. So folic acid is going to be absorbed in the jejunum. So iron was in the duodenum, folic acid in the jejunum, vitamin B12 is going to be in the terminal ileum. Okay, one by one. So how does this vitamin B12 absorption happen? So vitamin B12 is uh, uh, from the food, it is going to be uh, attached with the haptocorin which is produced by the saliva. So this binding is going to happen in the uh, stomach actually and then after that this uh, when it enters into the duodenum, the parietal cells of the stomach would have produced an intrinsic factor. So that is a binding factor for vitamin B12 but the binding of vitamin B12 to intrinsic factor is going to take place in the duodenum only. So this B12 and intrinsic factor are going to bind in the duodenum and after that the B12 is going to enter into the terminal ileum enterocyte. So the enterocyte is it is going to enter via a cubulin. So cubulin is going to be there. So the intrinsic factor is left at the junction itself and then the B12 alone enters into the enterocyte via the cubulin. So after entering into the enterocyte it is getting uh, it is going to transfer into the blood circulation. So the transporter here for this B12, vitamin B12 is going to be transcobalamin 2. So transcobalamin 2 is the transport protein for B12. So, what are the causes of B12 deficiency? Again, same like iron deficiency anemia. Either intake could be decreased. Like B12 is usually present in higher amounts in the uh, non-vegetarian foods like meat. So, okay. So, where, where people who are eating complete vegetarian diet, they are prone for getting B12 deficiency. So, vegetarians, when there is there could be an increased requirement as in pregnancy and lactation or there could be decrease in the absorption. Something or some pathology is there in the terminal ileum, either a malabsorption syndrome or a surgery or even some pancreatic or ileal disease, partial gastrectomy because intrinsic factor cannot be produced then. And then there is an in, uh, infection by a parasite, Diphylobotrium latum. So, this all is going to to inhibit the vitamin B12 absorption leading to B12 deficiency. So coming to folic acid absorption, so folic acid is going to be present in a polyglutamate form in the food. So this polyglutamate form is being degraded into the monoglutamate form and then being absorbed. So monoglutamate form is the uh, absorptive form for folic acid and it is going to be absorbed in the jejunum and transported into the blood circulation via transporters. So again the cause of folic acid deficiency could be either a decreased intake or it could be an increased requirement as in pregnancy and lactation or usage of certain drugs like phenytoin, methotrexate. So, uh, seizure, uh, seizure patients, they are going to take phenytoin and they are going to be prone, prone for developing megaloblastic anemia. So, methotrexate and alcohol, all of this is going to uh, cause folic acid uh, deficiency. So, as such, what is the function of this folic acid uh, and the vitamin B12? So, iron, we already know it is going to be incorporated into heme. But what is the function of this folic acid in vitamin B12? So, yes, it is going to be involved in the DNA synthesis. So, both folic acid and B12 are needed for the synthesis of DNA. So, when there is the, uh, uh, deficiency of these two, there is going to be impaired DNA synthesis. But the uh, cell's cytoplasm is going to be proper, right? The cytoplasm is keep on growing normally, while the uh, nuclear maturation cannot happen. So, the nucleus is going to be quite uh, small only. So, this is the reason why there is going to be a cytoplasmic nuclear asynchronies, okay? Leading to cytoplasmic nuclear asynchrony. So, so uh, cytoplasmic is mat uh, maturing normally, but nu uh, nucleus is not maturing normally. So, what, it, uh, what is happening? So, the cytoplasm is going to enlarge. So, that is why this, uh, it, the name of this anemia is given as megaloblastic. So, megalo means big. So, the cell size is going to be big, but the maturation of the DNA is not going to be proper. It is going to be impaired. So, the clinical features of megaloblastic anemia will be the same as any other anemia. Apart from that, we are going to have specific some symptoms. So, beefy red tongue can be present. Then, peripheral neuropathy or subacute combined degeneration. So, some neural kind of symptoms can be present with vitamin B12 deficiency. Not with folate deficiency. Only with vitamin B12 deficiency, you are going to have some neuro nerve related problems. Okay. So, what is the reason for some neuropathies developing in B12 deficiency is that uh, there is a reaction in which homocysteine is getting converted into methionine 
with the help of an enzyme and that enzyme is going to need vitamin B12 as the cofactor here. So, when this homocysteine is getting converted to methionine, the methyl melanyl CoA is simultaneously getting converted into succinyl CoA. So, these two reactions are going to need this vitamin B12. So, whenever there is a deficiency of vitamin B12, this reaction cannot take place. So, what will happen? The substrate will start accumulating that is homocysteine and methyl melanyl CoA will be accumulated right and then the succinyl CoA is the one which, which is getting actually incorporated into the myelin so it is needed for myelin synthesis so with this uh, reaction being incomplete succinyl CoA is not formed so that it cannot be incorporated into the myelin so when myelin synthesis is going to be uh, uh, impaired it is going to lead to some kind of neuropathies right so this is the reason why vitamin b12 deficiency is going to lead to some kind of neural defects so, what are the findings in megaloblastic anemia? So, in megaloblastic anemia, the peripheral smear is going to be quite characteristic. The first feature will be the macro ovulocyte. So, it, these are not just macrocytes. Macrocytes are just uh, RBCs which are uh, size more than 100 femtoliter. But these are macro ovulocytes. They are uh, assuming the uh, oval kind of shape also. Normally, when we see in PS, it is, this RBCs are round, right? So, here it is going to be become like an egg. Okay. So, macro ovulocytes, this is a characteristic finding. And then we are going to have Howell Jolly bodies. These are DNA remnants. So, in the RBCs, you are going to see some kind of dark violet material, which is the DNA remnant. And then we can have Cabot rings. So, Cabot rings are again nuclear remnants only. And then you can have fine basophilic stippling. So, stippling as the name suggests, there is going to be some dot 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 kind of an appearance inside the RBCs. So, fine base of liquid is going to be blue in color. So, blue color fine dots are going to be present. And apart from that, in the uh, WBCs, you are going to have hyper segmented neutrophils. So, these are all classical features of megaloblastic anemia. So, let us go to the image based questions related to this. So, in this, if you see, this is the hyper segmented neutrophil. So, this new, uh, neutrophil's uh, lobe is not just 3, it is nearly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Some 10 lobes are there in this. So, it is a hyper segmented neutrophil. Apart from that, if you see, these are the macro ovulocytes. Look at the size of it, man. It's quite big and it is oval in shape also, right? So, these are the macro ovulocytes. Then you are also seeing some kind of teardrop cells here. Then this one, if you see, this is the RBC in which you are seeing this dot-like appearance, right? So, this is the Howell Jolie body, okay? The second and third image are the Cabot rings. So, this Cabot ring usually takes up the shape of 8 like this inside the RBC or also it can look like a ring like this, okay? So, these are Cabot rings which are nuclear remnants again. So, anything related to nucleus, the DNA synthesis is going to be impaired, right? So, that kind of remnants we can see in megaloblastic anemia. Then, find basophilic stippling. So, inside the RBCs, you are seeing multiple small dots like this, right? So, this is the fine basophilic stippling. In the bone marrow, if you see, the bone marrow is going to try to compensate. So, there is going to be hypercellular bone marrow having a megaloblastic reaction. So, micronormoblastic reaction in IDA and megaloblastic reaction in megaloblastic anemia. So, megaloblastic in the sense, the cells are going to be, look big. So, the erythroid cells, the erythroblast, whatever the erythroid precursors are going to have a megaloblastic appearance. They are going to form a megaloblast. The blasts are quite big, okay. So, they are going to have a megaloblast. While in myeloid series, if you see, they are going to form giant metamyelocytes and band forms okay both metamyelocytes and band forms are again going to be quite large uh, and they are called as giant metamyelocytes and band forms so as such there is going to be ineffective erythropoiesis so even though the bone marrow is hypercellular what happens here is the say, the mature cells as they are formed they are going to be dying in the bone marrow itself okay so they don't reach the peripheral blood properly so there is going to be lots of precursors which are present but the uh, mature forms are not going to be there so because and this is going to happen not just for erythropoiesis entire hematopoiesis is going to be affected because dna is there uh, present in all the series right erythroid series then 
other than that we are also going to have wbc's my myeloid series and the lymph uh, megakaryocytic series right so all of this is going to have dna and everywhere vitamin b12 and folic acid is needed so the, all the series are going to be affected leading to ineffective hematopoiesis so eventually what will happen is in the blood picture you will get a pancytopenic picture in fact in india the most common cause of this pancytopenia is the megaloblastic anemia so when you see everything else is normal and the uh, uh, peripheral smear is showing a pancytopenia so you will have to ch check for the serum b12 and folic acid levels so pancytopenic picture can be seen in peripheral smear so coming to the rbc indices it is a macrocytic anemia right so mcv will be increased mch will be increased but both the volume and the hemoglobin is uh, increased proportionately so the mchc is going to be normal so mchc is normal only in megaloblastic anemia and then you can uh, measure for the serum folic acid levels and serum B12 levels which could be decreased. And then serum homocysteine and methylmalonyl-CoA will be elevated because they, those were the substrates on which the vitamin B12 is going to act. So without uh, the vitamin B12, the substrates are going to be elevated. So uh, methylmalonyl-CoA, it is elevated and it is going to be excreted in urine. So the levels in urine is also elevated. And for um, measuring the folate levels, it is better to uh, measure the RBC folate level rather than the serum folate level. So, RBC folate levels are a much more accurate test than a uh, serum folate level. Then, uh, urine figlu test. So, urine figlu test is for measuring uh, folic acid deficiency. So, increased figlu in the urine denotes folic acid deficiency. So, what actually happens here is histidine protein is going to be converted into figlu. So, form immunoglutamic acid is figlu. So, this figlu will then be converted into glutamate. So, for this figlu to get converted into glutamate, you need folic acid. Okay. So, without folic acid, this reaction cannot take place, right? So, figlu, this figlu uh, protein, uh, this intermediate itself will be increased. The substrate is going to be increased and that is going to be excreted in urine. So, this is a uh, kind of a diagnostic test for folic acid. And then we have Schilling's test. Schilling test is for vitamin B12. So, Schilling test is used for de de detecting the cause of B12 deficiency. 